few pockets of low pressure and a fairly heavy band of rain showers and snow all the way from the eastern portions of Montana down to western sections of Nevada. And of course the massive highs picking up warm moist air from the south bringing it northward. So when the two masses collide over Canada and the Arctic and the Arctic Coast Ocean is going to be quite a <laughs> Tactics comes into it a lot. Um, you know, it's kind of like the lads are almost coaching their teams as well as playing. So um, it's definitely a way as well to see, you know, who can out-tactic each other and who's going to come out on top between the matchups. I got away with that one there, Sater. Um, 
it's all, it, I do it myself. It's easy to give the ball away out of the back line playing out. You know, you try and keep possession and stuff. And, you know, players sometimes misplace a pass. And, yeah, it nearly cost um lad there. Yeah, very, very close. And all kind of eyes going towards... Well, I guess those wings more than anything else is the most I've seen played. But I came to one game where they started playing those long balls and getting it up and over the top and using that boosted stats that we are using because... The Irish players, they need a little bit of a boost in some areas, but I think the most surprising thing as well is the skill moves. How much would you use skill moves in your games as we do see? He's actually just getting closer and closer every time I open my mouth at this stage. <laughs> yeah, um, I have been known more to not use skills, but I'm trying to implement a lot over the years because especially these seasons now, um, this year, you do need skills a lot, um, you know, because it does get tighter on the box and stuff and... You know, just one perfect skill move time can easily just break the lines and you're in. So you see a lot of different variations of skill moves and then some lads cancel them as well. So um, it becomes very tricky to defend them. Yes, we do see the, the breakthrough coming time and time again, but the defense is starting to get a little bit more solid now for a lad here. And he's starting to get an attack moving, but he, he can't find the space going forward. If you're in these kinds of situations where you're up a goal, are you hungry for two or three more, or are you going to try to play just a possession game? I think at this point, you know, over two legs, it's early. So, you know, you would be pushing um, to, you know, create a comfortable lead, um, you know, going into that second leg with a bit of a cushion, um, you know, because you don't want to go in there, you know, with a close game. You want to put this leg to bed as early as you hope. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you look for a lad to push on a bit, maybe second leg, um, maybe start to close it out. Oh, as you do see, they're breaking into the box now, and Lad has a mounting attack, but it is snuffed out immediately by the defense. And a good counter attack can come through here, but he couldn't make the space. And he does find the ball, but it gets immediately intercepted as well. So it's getting closer and closer to making that break, but it's just not working out just yet. And I think I think a long ball might make the difference here, but it's it's so hard to tell when these players we haven't seen enough of them we've seen a bit of colo play and we've seen how well he can do but he seems to be one that can adapt to the change of play whenever he really needs so i'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to go for as the keeper using his feet there and getting it out of the box in the end but we start to see the counter attack this this could be the point to get it to a two nil really open it up and really put the pressure on and start to play that possession game but right now just a great ball through on the wing. I was worried he wouldn't find the space there. He manages to get it, but he immediately passes it back and it goes to the wrong colours there. And a, a bit of a split coming through. Yeah, and it's it's interesting to see, you know, how back and forth this game is going. You know, it seems like Lad gets a counter-attack and then Colo goes straight up the pitch. Um, You know, he had a great attack there. Colo was just so unfortunate not to find the back of the net, but um, he, he looks like he's coming into it a bit more um, as the game's going on. Yeah, he seems to be finding the marks here, but I think just using that possession, making space is the most important thing, as he does make a little bit there. He's on the run now. It's a one versus one. If he can just get the ball across, he does manage to use a little bit of skill, but just sends it wide, and that's not what you wanted to see. Yeah, and that was very well worked. It was unfortunate not to find the goal there, the little... Um, you oh, know, you see a pause that. coming through now as well for Lav. Might have to change some of the tactics up here as he is slowly working his way back in but he does have a little bit of space here does pull back on the shot and can't get it through the wall of defenders a little bit too strong ireland have an opportunity here might be able to get something going the wings are open there's players in the middle as well if you can get the ball in there's a chance that he can get someone on the end of it and he's holding he's praying for time here the pass was not the play to go for sometimes those balls just sending him in over the top someone will get on the end of it eventually but trying to play too much of that cute game with a short pass is ticky tack of football will not work out for him here and 25 minutes left in this half and not a lot of space pulling those defenders forward as well a change in tactics has to be coming forward from from shell at some stage that is a good ball through it does end up falling to one of his players he tries to do a skill move pass into the center of the box but just if it had worked, it would have been nice, but sometimes you just got to take the shot. Yeah, and the back heel nearly came off there, but it was good to see Colo, oh, you know, so start trying to get in on the end of this one. Oh, it's going to be just taken away, and the pause coming through in the last minute and a half, so there's going to be some changes coming through here. What do you want to see come through first here? Um, 
you know, I say for for Lad, um, I think he's doing fine. I think he's getting, he's defending quite well, and he's getting chances on that counter attack. Um, you know, he just needs to maybe put another one or two away um, to create a real nice cushion there. And Colo at the end there, you know, starting to attack more down the wing was great to see. You know, he nearly had that great back heel across for an easy tap in, but um, Lad was there defending. So um, I think both lads are, I'd say, are fairly content with how things are going yet, and won't really change too much um, this early. Yeah, and as they are pushing through the changes, they will just send the ball out to bring it to half time. I'm expecting to see a change in tactics as we do have the 100% dribble success from Shelburne as well. It's not bad going. Um, but yeah, there, there's been no real key moments from either team that has really pushed them ahead in my mind about who's the better one. Um, I feel like this is a very even match, and I feel that first scale maybe just. First goal maybe just took him by shock there a little bit, and they seem to be more evenly matched than I thought because I had seen Colo play already. I already had him held in high regard as a good player, but maybe it's just a matter of lads just being able to hold off this this attack that's coming forward the whole time. Yeah, and Lad was able to use that. Um, everyone FIFA community knows how powerful kickoffs can be, and he, that goal early, you know, it was huge for Lad. Was interesting to see also at um. Halftime, Colo had, I think, a 2.2 expected goals. Um, so he'd probably be very upset he hasn't managed to find a goal um, so far with a stat like that. Yeah, and more about the, the kind of styles of play that you see coming out in these kind of later stages of matches. This, we see a push for attacking already coming through. Do you ever go for that all-out attack kind of style or are you one of those players that likes to sit back and just control the pace of the game? Um, I kind of like to change it up um, depending on the opponent. Um, I really do enjoy like playing a high press, um, you know, keeping my players high and really, you know, playing quick, fluid and attacking football. But at times you do need to know when to slow it down and um, I like to mix up my players, slow it down at times. You see a Ooh. brilliant goal there from Vlad. Yeah, th just the way he kind of maneuvered around the edge of that box and then broke through, it just looked very, very seamless and practiced nearly. It, it's almost like a drill you would see in, a, in an actual football game where they, they knew exactly where every player was going to be. So a great little goal. And you're you're Shelburne right now. You're you're sitting on Colo. What, what are you thinking in your head? What do you have to go for? Ooh. Nearly a goal there. Never mind. I'm just gonna look I'll let you go then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, he's going to have to start... Um... You know finding ways to get a goal here because um you know he's seen a good bit of the ball outside lads box and stuff but it just keepers are making saves defenders are blocking and wow. bringing some of them wide there as well that, that's yeah. that's yeah, not what you want to see he's had a couple of chances Definitely, yeah. yeah um unlucky yeah i think i think unlucky is a fair word to use i think that's a fair <laughs> one um but I, it, it's Maybe, but Colo, Colo was a player that we saw go 3-0 down in the first half and then come back and win 5-3, I think it was, in the first game. So he is one of those players that can bring it out from the mud and just kind of bring themselves back into the game. It's a lot of heart, um, people would say, is that if you're down two goals and being able to bring it back from that, three goals and bring it down from that, you're a team that has something about them. And I don't want to rule Colo out at any stage, but a two-goal lead is something to be worried about coming into the last, like, 20 minutes 30 minutes you, you got to be kind of careful about that that timer ticking away and does there become a mental kind of edge then later on where you think some more opportunities will open up just like that when you're trying to get those goals that you're leaving your defense a little bit scarce yeah i mean it is going to be in the back of colo's mind you know he doesn't want to let this leg um you know get away from it at all he needs to keep this close um but colo as well he's an experienced player he's played in qualifiers over the years and stuff um you know, he, it's not like it's new to him. He he knows this situation. It's um, you know, he he knows what he has to do here. So um, you know, I I think firmly he he. Oh, he see, there we go. Yeah, just just kind of pulls one out of the hat, just as you're explaining, talking about how good he is, and he just proves you're right immediately. I've, why does that never happen when I'm playing games? <laughs> but yeah, no, I, that was a brilliant little goal. Good passing play. The defense was. It, it was a little bit shaky there in some places. There were some tackles going in that weren't quite going to reach, but it just putting the foot in sometimes can make the difference. But we see some changes coming in, Ch changing up a lot, actually. So we're going to be, yeah, defensive game plan coming in. It looks like Lad just wants to hold. Yeah, yeah, and maybe, you know, it will be a good boost for him if he can make it um, into the second leg. If he is feeling pressure right now, um, 
you know, a goal up. Uh, you know, lad doesn't want to choke this 2 0 lead at all. Um, so I think he, even if he manages to make it in a goal up, um, I think he'll be content with that. Yeah, and just get getting the goal difference in as well. It always feels good when you have a couple of goals. So I would like to see him go for one more, maybe. But oh, he does lose possession there. That's not the that's not the player we wanted to see right there. He kind of falters a little bit there. But gets the skill moves in. Doesn't get the pass through. A nice interception. Nice read of the play coming through there. And we do see a mounting attack, but a good little slide there. Colo not giving any any chances away. Will not swing for that true ball i thought there was an opportunity there I, one thing i'm kind of confused about is there's not a lot of over the top true balls coming out from many of the players i've seen and the one player that did do it got two goals from it do you think that should be an idea going into this with such high boosted stats that those strikers can break that gap and can make that space yeah definitely and i think you know a lot of players know this here um how effective the over the top true balls have been the l1 oh, r1 as you see colo under pressure there, but manages to get it back. Will get back into that midfield. Doesn't have any players pressing forward and tries to go for that over the top, but gets intercepted. Does manage to keep possession, though, more importantly. Tries to go for it again. Does manage to get it into the box, but dispossessed right at the edge of it. Just got a foot on that. Might have been a different story, but good throw there from Bazunu. One of my favorite Irish keepers of all time in the moment. Too bad that South Southampton are going to be going down by the looks of things, but... We do see some great Irish players actually coming out and making it into those big leagues and really putting on a show. I think everyone remembers Ronaldo's penalty save. I think that's yeah, that was, that's um, going to be a memory that we're all going to cherish for a while. But a great true ball, straight on. One versus one with the keeper. Has to take his time, but takes a little bit too much. Had a little bit more space to pick up there, but the last seven minutes of play now, time ticking away. Colo goes for the short ball. Goes for a skill move pass. Nice little bit of flair. Nice little bit of drip on that one. A few vibes, but tries to get it through into the box. And now it's all up to Ireland to just keep that ball as far away from their half as possible. Just has to look for those ball. He's trying to go for one over the top. Not a lot of defenders back, but does fall to the wrong player. Johnston has an opportunity here. Swings for it from out far, but doesn't quite land. Keeps possession, more importantly. The defense is looking a bit shaky now as they are in the box, but it is saved and... With time ticking away, you have to kind of feel for feel for lad now. Yeah, and he had a very good chance there to go three one up, and I'm sure he would have been absolutely over the moon if he could have scored that and gone into the second leg, um, two goals up. But yeah, I know he started to play much more attackingly better there. Um the last few minutes. There's ooh, nearly another chance. You see the midfield's working well now. There's not a lot of out of time, so needs to make a play now can't risk playing it back now especially with that timer gone over a nice true ball he's in on goal he goes for it he gets in the in extra time he manages to tie it up before he goes to that second leg that is that is a stagger to the heart for yeah. lad right now and colo manages to pull it out in the last second yeah and that was extremely unfortunate for lad he was maybe only 10 seconds away there from the ref blowing the whistle but you know, Colo showing why he's so dangerous there. A beautiful green time finish, just putting way too much power on it right through the keeper. And yeah, that's a huge goal for Colo to level things up on the second leg. Yeah, I don't think you'd be allowed to pick... Uh, I don't think you're allowed to pick Argentina, but uh, <laughs> that, that, that might be a, a bit... Of, <laughs> that might be a bit mad now for the Irish League, but um, yeah, we're going to see some tactics coming in. He's going for... Trying to decide between the two. If I, if I were him, I'd just go ultra attacking. Like, you've drawn the first one. You may as well go all out for the win in the second and try pick up some points. I think that, that would be that would be the best way for, especially with the two legs. If you just take this one, you take it all. So I'd like to see him go for it, but I want to more um, break into the mindset of a FIFA player because obviously you've done quite well for yourself in the FIFA scene previously. And I'm, I'm sure you're still around and playing, so... Well, how has it changed over the years from I know back in the day it used to be all about the speed of your strikers and your wingers and now with defenders having more speed do you have to play more of a passing game now? Yeah I definitely think you do um, you know looking back to probably my most successful year was FIFA 19 and back then you know um, I, I was playing very high uh, pressure on heavy touch um, very high system you know pressing lads um, you know doing a lot of things that you can't really 
do anymore. Um, you know, now looking at my game compared to then, uh, yeah, it's a lot more pass and a lot slower. Um, and just that happens, you know, over the years, the games change, um, you know, so you just have to adapt and stuff. But no, definitely different over, over the years. And what would be the change that kind of affected you the most as you kind of went through the, the phases of playing each game when it came out? What was the biggest change you found in your own style of play that you were worried about when you were playing against people that you like maybe had a weakness somewhere? Yeah, um, I, I was known kind of for playing the 4 one 2 one 2 but it's a narrow formation and FIFA 19 a lot of success. But when FIFA 20 and FIFA 21 came around, you know, it was easier to defend a lot more uh, compactly. So trying to play up the middle um, narrow just wasn't really working at all. I was finding it tough to create space and stuff. So it forced me to change um, how, how I wanted to play. Yeah, okay. It's nice just to get insight on how things have changed over the years because coming from a traditional esports background of different games, mm -hmm. we're used to things changing rapidly kind of within the scene of Valorant and FPS and stuff like that. Things change quite rapidly and you, you constantly have to be changing how you're playing the game even the style of agent that you're playing but when it came to fifa i always played the game of i would just outpass a player i'd be the person putting the long balls over the top and I'd, I'd find the spaces where i could find those like avenues and find the channels and kind of ping them in but i went back to play fifa 23 on release as i always do and i just felt like my passing game was so much weaker because the defenders were so much faster i started to get worried about have finding different channels to go through and playing through the midfield which is something i wasn't used to but watching some of these players they do have their own distinct styles of playing the game and some of them have changed into skill move kind of players where they're using that to kind of break down a defense or they're going for true balls into some channels and then there's some players that just like to make space with passes until they find that true ball it seems like everyone has their own distinct style and i'm not seeing anything on the weak side just yet and I think even the Gareth show when he opened up his first game, the way he started the game, he just immediately used the wings, broke into the middle immediately and opened up chances and started with a three goal lead. But then he started to falter off as the game went on. So is the ability to change your style halfway through the game important in this new one? Or can you kind of just play this one style and if you play it well enough, you'll win? No, I definitely think it is um, good to, you know, have another style in mind. Um, you know, that's why you see a lot of the lads with their game plans, the tactics they've made. The lads would probably have, you know, maybe two or three different tactics they can switch to, um, you know, just by clicking the D-pad in game. Because, um, you know, say if you're just a player who wants to try over the top through balls a lot, you know, your opponent's probably going to catch on very quick. That's um, what you're doing. So they'll probably end up right stick switching to a centre back and just manually watching those runs. So then you'll have to come up with, you know, a different um, point of attack yeah brilliant i just I just want to break down all the information i can for all the viewers wondering about how the players are so good at fifa because i know for a fact if i was playing against one of these dads would be eight nil within two minutes like they'd be scoring from the halfway line on me i'd, I'd just be lost against some of these guys but we do see lads lad hasn't got to the same start he did last time but his passing game is quite good he's making good space it just seems like both players here have kind of copped on to each other's styles and they're pressing really hard it's a lot of man marking going on as well they they everyone seems to have a number for everyone and it, it's very reminiscent of the kind of leicester city style when they first started playing that high pressing game and right now we see one chance come through and it just lands in the right place at the right time and first time in the match was actually in colo take the lead here with shelburne so will that kind of put a dampener now on lad knowing that colo came back from that original two deficit and brought it back now that he's in the lead would that worry you if you were if you were in lad's position uh, i'm sure yeah it's causing a bit of frustration for lad in the back of his mind um especially with that goal as well uh colo actually red timed it on the original shot and got fortunate to keep her push it right back um to his other player so i definitely think lad um you know is feeling frustrated by these last two events but let's see here oh he's still getting good chances though you know he's not out of this at all yeah he's definitely he's making opportunities happen it's just actually capitalizing on him is is the next big thing as we do see a great little ball down the side there he needs to be able to find someone in the middle he tries to get the ball through but it lands for him perfectly if he could just get the shot off and he does and colo has done this so many times where i've been like lads looking really good or gara's looking really good and then colo comes into the second half and just goes look i'm gonna score seven goals and you have nothing you have nothing for me i'm just gonna take over this game and <laughs> It still seems to be happening again. I'm going to start calling it the Colo effect. And <laughs> he, he's just 
opening up right now. So, lad, the frustration's building now. What would you do tactics-wise right now? You're playing as Ireland. You're in lad's seat right now. What, what would you be changing up? Um, I think I'd be trying to at least make the halftime here. Um, you know, try to grab a goal, but I'd wait till halftime to make tactical changes, I think. Um, you know, as a, that kind of last goal was a mistake um, on lad's party. Gave it to him a bit easily out of the back, so... It's not like, um, you know, if he can clean up those mistakes, he's still fine. Um, it's still a bit early yet, but I think, you know, it changes maybe at half time, and if not, then definitely by the 60th minute, if he's still two goals down. And would that be a, a timestamp for you to make changes in your own style of play? You go 45 minutes to be my first change, and then 60 minutes to be my second change. Is that something that's in the back of your head when you're playing? Um. Yeah, I, thought, I do kind of use half time, maybe some minor things, not major, but if my 60th minute is my mark, leave myself a good 30 minutes um, to make, you know, severe changes, bring on new players, change up the tactics a good bit, because um, you do want to leave yourself a good bit of time. And then if you do level it up or get the goals, you can always just pause and change back to the way it works. Oh, that's, that's um, a great little goal to get. It was scrappy, but the power was there and it goes straight through the keeper's hands, so a great one nonetheless and it does bring him back into this and the first foul we've actually seen um <laughs> from either player so it, it, it's it's a good okay. game it's not dirty at all it, there's not no chelsea good. here um but I, I can't say that about chelsea now because they're they're not playing too well at the moment are they yeah well they have a tough match with madrid right now so see how they get on with that yeah. one We'll see how they get on. Frank Lampard's back. It has to go better for them, right? <laughs> has to. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, let's break this down. So we're coming into the, the last half, the last leg, the last few moments of the game, and Colo has a 2-1 lead. We did see him go down 2-0 and bring it back. I kind of expect to see a more defensive style come out from Colo, but that's what I expect. From watching Colo, I know he's just going to go attack because it happened against the Gareth show where it was looking close. And then he scored three goals in the space of 15 minutes. So I just know that Colo isn't going to let off the pedal. And I think that's a good style to have is that I can't remember which manager said it, but you're a good defense is a good offense. Mm -hmm. Like if you can score more goals than them, you win the game. It's not about mm -hmm. not letting them score. Just get more goals and you win anyway. So it's not a bad tactic to go for. And if he can open up these channels like he is right now, considering it's all out attack coming from Lad, this is a great ball through. And he does miss that Maybe. felt like a sitter. Yeah, that should have been a, a third goal of this leg. Back outside the box. A bit of time to work with here. Just needs to find the angle to to shoot or get it through to the right player. The skill moves coming through, trying to buy space and does manage to get past his man, but gives the ball away. That was a bit of a limp pass to go through there. And it, this is the chance now. Lad needs to make something happen. There's no one on that left-hand side, though. He's going to use this right channel. He's going to try to get someone in the box. It looks like it could just be a cross, but I haven't seen a lot of people just send it in. They always seem to want to pass it from here. And is the is there the heading game just not good enough in FIFA at the moment for it to be an idea? Um, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with, you know, some of your personnel as well. If you have tall um, attackers and soft players with good jumping and physicals like that um oh. they're, they're not great goals are they from lad but they're, they're going in but they're, they're not like flashy or they seem to be a little bit scrappy overall in the second half yeah um i'm sure he won't be complaining at all how it's got it's gone in there but as we see what oh, that would have gotten a second from that seems like a player he's um you know finding great space with and looking to exploit you see another one Colo. <laughs> Colo, you're not allowed to do that, Colo. Like, we just had hope for Lad. Like, there was a spark there, and he just stamped it out almost immediately. But here's a 60 minute mark. This is the pause time you were talking about. I think Lad, he's on the same kind of vein where he knows he needs to change something up to try to break that lead. But we do see the ball now back with Colo. The Reds are marching here. If, they, if he can get another one now, Lad will need to make some severe changes with a two goal deficit, as we were talking about before. That's, that's kind of a warning sign. But. I don't know in my mind what I would change apart from trying to get something down on that, that left hand side. That left wing is something that, that I think is underutilized right now. Mm -hmm. My lad, and I think it, it looks like a weaker spot to kind of go for something because if Colo's going to keep playing down his left hand side, 
all of his players will be dragged and if you can get someone down there and work that side i think there's an opportunity there for you that, that's just my idea though i could be wrong no i think that's a, a good way to look at it. i think lad has been attacking a lot more centrally and if you can change up his attacks you know a different point of attack um could definitely lead to that equalizer and maybe a winner for him oh keeper has to come to collect that one you, you don't want that to be happening to you and well, did that happen to Liverpool yesterday? Is that yesterday's match? They kind of uh, kind of fluffed one uh, in the seven. Was a four one against Leicester? Uh, uh, I think it was. I think it was the right I back. They just gave it up a little bit too easily. Yeah. I, I think it was Liverpool anyway. I remember watching some yeah. of the highlights on the on the YouTube there, and there was just uh, there was one goal that was just absolutely awful to give away. But yeah, I, I'm sure there'll be some tactics coming out now. But I think the fact that he hasn't got this pause through is. It must be worrying him a little bit that he can't get that that change in that he needs. Yeah, it definitely is frustrating him. And, you know, he doesn't want to kick the ball out himself and waste a good possession to get that pause off. So, um, yeah, you know, it is. He wanted that pause around the 60th minute mark and it's gone in 15 in-game minutes here. So, definitely frustrating for him. Yeah, and Colo on the attack again. He's in, but he doesn't let it off quick enough. He wants to just take too many touches and the keeper comes out well for that one and... We won't see anything else spicy coming from Kolo for that one. And we do see that passing game once again in that midfield. It is opening up space and it is currently the, the man marking is there, but four on four, they can't make the room. And it goes back to Kolo once again, holding it wide. Plenty of time to work with here as well. And the more time that he wastes as well is better for him. He is going to get through onto that goal though. And there's an opportunity here. Bad pass, not it's just too much weight on it and is giving up once again, lad trying to make something happen but no one's going forward and the four man strong back line there just holding their holding the mark player goes offside so they can't go through to that one they're looking for that true ball someone's trying to get through for it the wing opens up again doesn't opt for it gets it into the mid though and he does go for the shot and he does get it in it goes to 3-3 eight and a seven and a half minutes left and we can't have it end in a draw lads come on now someone has to do something yeah, you'd think another goal here is surely coming this last seven minutes or so, the way the two boys have been attacking. Um, you know, great comeback now, now from Lad this leg. Slipped up a good, uh, lead in the first, but, you know, great resilience shown there to bring it back, especially, you know, when time was ticking away there from. Yeah, and with it being this close and the first one being a draw, everything to play for here, all those points that I know they desperately want to try and get to that final in the Aviva, but... I, I, I don't know how it's going to go because both of these players seem to have their moments of brilliance and they seem to be able to carry that momentum but both players seem to be able to like stop the tempo as well bring it back and then slowly grind it back to a decent a decent standstill here once again with the draw and Colo has been making the break and he does get through on goal and it's scrappy and it's actually a foul he, I think I think Lag got away with murder there I want to see the VAR on that one yeah, I, I thought that was a goal for sure. I don't know what happened there myself. I, I think the, it must have been a foul on the keeper. It must have been, but VAR, VAR we, we do need VAR in FIFA. Bring bring VAR in. Um, we'll be we'll be the assistant refs. We'll sit with the headsets on and call the referee over. Absolutely no bother, but <laughs> we do see... we do. It's a good attack, but just snuffed out. Both players just have to give it the roll now. The last few minutes, Colo does have possession. It's all on him. Trying to find the channel, trying to find the space now. Man comes through, manages to get the ball on, but only one player in the box. He can't swing for that one. Does lose possession as well. One minute at a time. All down to Lad now. Can't pass it back because the timer will go and it will tick over. Do we go to added time here? Let's go check the rules real quick. say the lads are asking yeah the lads are asking me what to do as well hold on we'll see what the story is we're gonna go find out exactly what happens
not a golden goal. I don't think it goes a golden goal. Right. Going through the rule book. Golden goal. Right, we're going to golden goal. That's the story. Okay, so we have a golden goal coming up. I, I'm I've never played in a golden goal myself, apart from with the lads. You know, when you're all sitting around playing FIFA, but. Obviously, this is a competitive tournament. How do you feel about Golden Goal? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I've been in many Golden Goal situations over the years myself, and it is, it is pretty intense. Um, you know, going into that, knowing just one goal ends it. Um, you do, you hope for to have that kick up because we have seen in the first leg how effective it was for Live getting the goal straight away. Um, so yeah, it is, it is nerve wracking. You know, I think maybe lads, you know, might get a bit more. Um, you know, cautious with their play, knowing that if they do, you know, do a simple mistake, it might cost them the game just one goal ending it. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see here between the lads. They were both attacking so well there. Um, you know, who can find that final attack to win it for them? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they're going to go for here. I think... Uh, see, the thing I'm worried about, right, so I'm going to just say this straight out. Both players started the first half on the opposite legs really well and opened up really early with a goal. So I can't in my head put one player over the other and say, let's say Colo. I can definitely say Colo is going to get it. I can't say Lad is going to get it either. Is there anyone you're seeing from their style of play and how they played that you're going, yeah, th this, this player will take this one immediately. They are going to win the golden goal. Or do you feel like they are very evenly matched, these two? No, I think you had a spot on there. Um, there is no favour for me either. I think both lads were creating, you know, equally good opportunities. And, you know, this might be one of the most even, you know, contests I've seen in a while. And there really is no favour here for this. It's just whichever lad can, you know, find that one attack he gets. Um, and, yeah, bury it then and get yourself three points. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at these tactics coming through and I'm, I'm really hoping to see just a good goal because we've seen some scrappy goals from both sides. We've seen some that have just been deflections coming back and someone sticking a head on her or putting a toe on the end of it and managing to get it. But we are going to golden goal here. So this is the first golden goal we're going to commentate. And Lad starting off here with the kickoff. First goal wins it and having a look here, we're gonna kind of try to break down what we can, but Colo manages to make a break for himself. Find some space. This is where we see his skill moves come in. This is what he loves to do. He loves to try and break down a player, but he does lose it immediately. And the first throw in uh, over the entire course of the two legs and the golden goal. The first throw in we've seen. The game has been very clean possession wise. Yeah, it has. Um that was actually good great defending by Ladder originally just giving the ball away, but your chance he's in and he just uh, he just finishes it off he only needed four and a half minutes to actually get it that's yeah great that <laughs> that ends golden goal we will be cutting to a really really short break before we get into our second match and um, which is going to be a great one as well we have some great teams playing that one so please guys don't go anywhere we'll be back in just a few minutes
Welcome back, everyone. We've got Example versus Luciano here. We have Dundalk versus... Sadly, the uh, Brave Wanderers aren't in this one. So we have to go with the Irish team once again. But we do have a great match here. Both of these players are currently undefeated. They have won both of their other games. So it should be a bit of a closer matchup once again. The last game did go the golden goal, but all these players have proven to be the top of their group so far. So, Dulce, the big question is... Have you heard of these players before? Have you played against them? Any idea about the way they play or anything at all? Yeah, um, I'm very familiar with Example. You know, he's been kind of one of the top Irish players all the years um, competing, you know, um, international events and stuff like that. And haven't heard too much of um, Go, but, you know, he's two wins from two. So, you know, clearly a very good player himself. So I'm excited to see him. But Example, you know, he won his last game 16 to 8. Um, so I'm really excited to see how many 16. goals Example could get here. Yeah, 24 goals and two legs is by far the I think the most I've seen. Yeah, there has to be something said about just showboating sometimes and just really taking over your opponents. But yeah, that that is that is a great scoreline. I wish we had caught that one. But with all of these guys taking the whoever takes this takes the group for the moment anyway and takes that top spot. All eyes should be on these guys going into the next leg of things. So. Really looking forward to seeing how they're going to go around this and how they're going to kind of maneuver themselves into the head as well because there's a lot of mental game in FIFA as well. You got to be able to break them down just a little bit. So really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen as we do see a really good attack coming through. A lot of bodies in the box and he seems to be ducking and weaving his way through but doesn't quite get out to it. Tries to get a good clearance in and does make the space. So that's, that's a decent little start there. A good attack. There was something mounting but... The counter-attack is coming through and they have a good opportunity here. They can't quite get it over the top and it's a bit of a scrappy one overall, but they seem to have that energy about them at the moment, right? Yeah, they do. And that, that chance there, Go had, he looked very shifty with his skill moves there. Um, you know, in round the box example, just made a great um, tackle the last moment. But, you know, positive signs from Go. you know, he really looks like a top player, um, you know, judging by how shifty he was there with that attack. Um, yeah, the skill moves were just look beautiful there. Yeah, and I have to say I do like the fact they went for the orange kit. Uh, I just think the orange kit is a lovely kit for Ireland. Just I, I really got, I got one for my son as well. Like I just think it's a lovely looking kit. And um, as we're having a look here, an early pause coming through from example, maybe a change in tactics already coming through. And is that something you see often in the highest tier of play with some of the best players that they? They recognize something and go we need to change this quick because i know what they're trying to do yeah no that, that is surprising um normally you see a pause coming that early if you've you know gone a goal or two down um you know but example hasn't conceded here so it is a bit surprising um he's obviously noted something early and wants to change it but um yeah it is surprising to see especially that since he hasn't conceded a goal that he wants to make changes this early 
Yeah, so a, a good tactical swing maybe might be coming out, for example, when he gets the opportunity. Do you see the paws coming through now? We'll start to see something coming out and... Oh, just a quick hood change. That, that's all it was. No, nothing too mad. First corner of the game, first set piece. See if there's any tactics coming out, but as I've seen every single corner so far, it's been that short ball for a pass and a shot comes off, but nothing to come from that yet. And I have to keep an eye out for what they want to go for here. I am curious to see what Dundalk have on offer um, in this match because Bray Wanderers are looking a bit more like the Irish national squad, which is good, but on the other end of it, they, they know what kind of players are on the Irish team and what they can do, especially with the likes of Evan Ferguson coming through. Absolutely stellar player and really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do for Ireland in the future, as long as the, the UK doesn't try to poach him like all the rest of them. But <laughs> if he can open up this game here, and that might be someone you might be able to work off of because he has been scoring a phenomenal amount of goals and some great goals as well. And playing for Ireland he seems to be doing well for us as well so the uh, more power to Evan Ferguson at the moment anyway yeah no he's a really exciting player you know watching in the Prem he's doing brilliant for Brighton and for Ireland you know it's great to have you know an 18 year old you know supplying you know the the goods or whatever you want to call it um but yeah no a really exciting player to watch and definitely uh one for the future for Ireland uh, you know looking forward to the next couple of years with him leading the line yeah, and we do have some great youth coming through as well, especially Bazunu, as well as a great keeper, just kind of being let down by his defence in the Prem at the moment. And as we do see, the attacks are coming through strong and fast for Luciano right now, but example has an opportunity here to try and get something going. Ne never mind, it just gets kind of cut out immediately. And the, the defence, the defensive side we've seen from most of the players, this has been fairly solid, but when you see someone break down that defense, it, it starts to open up like the waterworks and the floodgates, and they seem to be able to cut it down time and time again. And we start to see it change around a little bit. Is there a is there a style of player out there that is just pure defensive, and are they like just the hardest player to play against? Yeah, and um, there are a couple. Um, more so, you'd find attackers. There are a couple. Um, you'd see, you know, the five back formation used a lot. Um, you know, keeping it really compact, having three centre mids then, you know, just outside of the box. It is really tough um, to break down at times. You know, only downside of that is maybe it might be tough for you to build out, but if you want to play that defensive, um, you know, it's perfect for just, you know, making your opposition have to pass, you know, a lot to try break down because it's so tight. Um, so, yeah, no, definitely effective in keeping clean sheets. Yeah, we see them here. They're trying to make their way down the side as well. Good wing play coming out and uh, all eyes on Dundalk to try and break down this Irish defence, but it's it just doesn't seem to be working out for them just yet. They do seem to have a good hold on Luciano, holding it pretty well. A good ball down the side as well. This could really open up something. They need to get it into the box though, and without people, I, I think it's just a fear of crossing it in normally. There's there's something going on there. He goes for the shot at the it's it's that front post. The, the keeper always has that on lock, but they manage to scramble a corner out of it at least. And they get something, and they're trying to play it back, trying to make some space. There's someone on the far side. They do actually go for the back post, the Man City style, and no one on the end of it this time around. Those manage to keep possession, though. Lands back in their feet. Goes for the shot. That was a little bit too close for comfort, I think. Gal was looking very dangerous with the skills he's putting on display. That last chance that went out for a corner, I think he was just waiting for a striker to maybe take a step back and then an air one X pass into him for an easy tap in, like we've seen with Lad. Yeah, I, I just I wouldn't say it was the most exciting first half, but we saw glimmers of why they're such good players. Like the way they move the ball around, it seems to be good defending from both sides, but. Not a lot of big opportunities have been like squandered or missed. It has been just really good defensive play from both sides. So I'm really looking forward to seeing them try to break down the defense. And nil-nil is, is never a fun point to be in in the game because I feel like one goal opens everything up if you can hold each other to this kind of style. So do you get worried the further you go in and you haven't scored? They haven't either, but you haven't. Does that get in your head a little bit? 
yeah, I think it definitely does because, you know, as, as the game is going on and you don't have a goal, you know, it's always in the back of your mind. If the, if the opposition do score then and you haven't been scoring, then you're kind of really in trouble. Um, you, you might get a bit worried, especially how late um, they get that goal. So, no, you, you definitely want to try to get a goal as early, even if you are, you know, not losing your drawing right now. Um, you do want to take that initiative and try to find that goal. Yeah, so I see a corner coming through now. It's gonna go for the short pass again. I, I feel like someone has to be a long ball merchant. It's got to be someone out there that can just do that delivery, just get the distribution out there with the the further channels, better avenues. But right now, that wing seems to be working. Right now, Dundalk, good opportunity here. No one in the box he has to do it himself here. Goes for the shot, and it is cleaned by Kelleher there and. A nice and clean take. We now see Ireland back on it. I, I feel like I should say Bray Wanderers just for the sake of it, but they do have a good opportunity here to get something going, taken away immediately by Dundalk. It, it's a very back and forth game, and I feel like this one is oh my god, never mind. He he can just score from there, I guess. A brilliant shot by Elliot and Great vision to be able to take it from there as well, knowing that the sight lines are clear, you know where you're going for an amazing goal. Yeah, and example, Sean White, you know, one of the best players around there with a green time finish. I don't know if that's going in, if he doesn't green time it. Um, but a few players will know how effective that goal is this year. You see it a lot from short corner as well. Lads will pass out there and try that exact same shot. But um, you, you like to see that changing up your point of attack there, taking a long shot. It's not always trying to pass in, so a great change of pace there from examples to take an early lead yeah and he does get another opportunity straight off the bat opens it up there it was offside in the end but it, it shows that there is different forms of attack that he can get on the end of and that was just an, a different style that if it hadn't been of offside it would have been a brilliant shot on target at least and if he can do it again we'll see what happens but he does find a nice ball through there he is one on one with the keeper and he just keeps drilling them straight at the keeper. You got you gotta be using those uh thumbsticks to be sending him in some directions, lads. But another great interception. Picks the ball up again, and the pressure is just constantly being applied here. He does get another one in. That should go out for a corner. And do you start to get a little bit worried now that that goal went through and you've seen how much pressure they have on? Do you change up the tactics now or do you just try and hold possession for a little while? Yeah, I think I don't think there's a need um, to change it up just yet. Um, you know, as you were saying, it has been so tight between the two, um, and both of them are still getting, even if they're half chances, you know, a bit attacks are going for them. So I think maybe wait till if it is this scoreline, still wait till the second leg to um, think about change. I don't think much needs to change right now. Solid game plan coming out from Dundalk and some good adaptability as well. And on either side, Bray Wanderers, Luciano hasn't really found the same mark, I don't think. He, he hasn't really put down a, a stake in this to say, this is how I play and this is how I've taken my leads in the past. And I guess my main kind of question there is, how, how do you instill your style into a game? How do you make the make the opposition kind of fear the way you want to play because I, I don't think there's been a lot of pressure coming out onto example I think he feels comfortable here yeah and he had started off great but it has kind of died down from um, his attack and prowess um, but you know if you, you firmly believe in your play side you know just keep at it um, you know just keep finding um, you know the little gaps and you know, there might be a bit of passing out, especially at this stage when he, he doesn't want to you know, get countered easily. He might take a bit of extra time on the attacks, but um, no, I'll just keep hacking away, um, trusting your ability and, you know, hopefully then it will pay off um, for you and you can get those goals. Yeah, as we do see, he does... It, it's such a... It's such a hard one to call when... We, we heard the previous scoreline, 16 goals, and you come to a game where they're more evenly matched and you, you think the group might be a bit heavy-sided on the top end that some of the players that are winning their games are exceptionally good. And uh, it's It kind of shows that like anyone can win I, if they bring the right tactics and the right idea coming in. And the fact that these two are being held to the same level, is that example being pushed down 
or is that Luciana rising to the rank that he wants to be at and that he wants people to see him as so there, there is questions about how good these players are under the pressure of this competitive tournament and we see a, a good attempt there from outside the box going for a low shot into the bottom left hand corner doesn't quite come off but he does get a corner we will see this passing game come out once again straight back to the center backs and the full backs and keeping an eye on them and trying to bring it back in but it, it seems like Luciano's starting to find a little bit of difficulty getting it into the box now. Yeah, no, he is, and he had tried there um, what is known as a German cross this year. He triggered one of his defenders, um, you know, and it, it is very effective. Just got the cross blocked, unfortunately, but if that cross does get in, and he times that third man right, um, you know, it's a goal nine out of ten times. So even though it didn't look like much of a chance there, um, he was very close to, you know, um, getting a great opportunity there to equalise it. Yeah, uh, the, the opportunity is kind of squandered there, but going into the second leg, a goal up, that advantage coming through, it's, it's actually going to be a little bit closer than I thought as we're going to be going. Uh, it's just dispossessed immediately, and it, it seems that both teams have kind of got that defense on lock now. I, I want to see someone change something fast and really break open this match and either bring that 2-0 lead into that second leg or bring it back to even and maybe even try and go for that golden goal or win that second leg heavily just to kind of put their marker down. But I'm kind of getting the feeling that both these teams are kind of under the pressure now. I, I, I'm not seeing a tactic change. I'm not seeing anything too stylistic coming out. And I would like to see someone work with something new to... Mm -hmm put them on the, the back burner and really put the pressure on. Uh, finding it difficult now to see what they're able to do, though. We do see a good attack coming out. He does manage to send it home. That is a two-goal lead, and that will be the first leg inadvertently going to Dundalk. And as we do see the celebration coming through, uh, he's holding on to that one because he's taking the lead and he wants to hold on to that feeling. Yeah, and that was a huge goal, for example, there. You know, only two minutes left this first leg. Um... I think even if he went in one nil, he would have been um, happy with himself, you know, because defensively he's looked amazing. But now that second goal cushion, even maybe a third here. Great defending. Yeah, absolutely brilliant defending there to come out and stop that one. And they're looking for any opportunity to get a goal, but with the time ticking away, there's not much left to work with. Once it comes through, when we get that stoppage time, we have two, three minutes stoppage time. If it even goes that far and the, it can't be passing it back, you can't be giving them any opportunities here. If you can get this one goal, there's an opportunity for something, but it's not to happen just yet. Corner, last chance. Going to go for that short ball once again. Send it back. You, only have, you can't pass it back now because the timer will take away and they will blow that whistle. He's outside, he's getting man-marked, he's getting taken out. Still has possession, though. Two players surrounding him. He manages to break free from one. He has to get the cross in now. Does manage to get the possession back. Has an opportunity, but it's taken away almost immediately. The whistle goes, and first half does go to example. Who you said you kind of expected to kind of take this game after the last massive scoreline we've seen. Yeah, and it was a real professional performance there from example. He defended, um, you know, phenomenally. Uh, you know, the whole game, he didn't really give away too many clear-cut chances at all. And then on the other end, he took his two goals brilliantly, um, had some other great chances as well. So, yeah, example, um, looking brilliant, brilliant the whole way there. And But I wouldn't go, he's only two goals down, FIFA can change, you know, um, so quickly. So um, he still has time to, to come back and do something here. But example, just looking unreal right now. Yeah, and tactic-wise, Luciano has to be looking at some changes here. I'm not sure what what my idea would be going in. I've seen the channels, I've seen the midfield. I think those long shots from outside the box might be an answer to this. I want to kind of pick your brain about how you feel about going for those styles of shots and going for outside the box. Is it something that people have to fall back on or is it a game style you can go for where you try and get that? absolute star power striker that can just take them from outside the box 
No, yeah, I think it definitely um, could be a tactic if you want to go that way. A lot of players, you know, won't be moving goalkeepers from that far out when a player is going to shoot. So you can easily catch a player off guard. You see, brilliant goal. Yeah, we see a pause coming through straight away. That's a perfect start. Just what He's changing it back me. again. Never mind. He's just changing the, the settings. Got to remind him to change them <laughs> during the main menus, not during the games. I'm sorry, he can, he, he can get it sorted then. Great little bit of information there for everyone that he can change those ones, but. He does like seeing the players' names. We got to give them credit too. The players are looking good out here. There was a foul there, but play will go on. And all to play for here, here, really. The first goal coming through kind of evens it up a little bit. There's an opportunity there for something. He just needs to get one more and it's back to even. Will we see more of a mounting attack now from Ireland? And is there this their opportunity to kind of bring the game back and say, I, I want to be here and I want to go all the way? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was just a perfect start there um, from Galvin Bray Wonders. And, you know, they say the third goal is the most important goal in football. So now, you know, complete momentum swing back to him, even though he is losing. You know, he went out there, wasn't able to get a goal in the last 90 minutes, and he came out and got a goal in the first five. So I'm sure he'll be um, very positive about how he started this. Yeah. Good start. Got to get through the rest of the game, though, and keep that pressure up. But right now, the ball's swinging in. Opportunities for Dundalk, but it's just not getting the head on the end of it and not getting that shot off. They're working a little bit through the middle now, and they've made some great space. A good, another good through ball to follow it up. Making their way all the way to the wing to bring it back and try to get a pass in, because that's the style of play we've seen everyone go for. And they try desperately trying to get that ball back swinging and sliding and trying everything they don't want to give them a second here they do manage to find some space they do lose it in the end another good interception there and we do see Dundalk a little bit of space to work with they need to get it off fast the interception comes true but doesn't get a good touch on it gives it away I think Ireland they have a really good chance here coming back into this one and Luciano finds a good ball there's the shot no, not quite collected by the keeper. Pressure was on there, but it, it's a much better attack already coming through. We see some tactics coming out there from Dundalk as well. They have to try and get something sorted because those attacks are coming in fast. And I, I'd say the pressure is starting to mount now on Dundalk. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's interesting to see just like the last match um, we commented over. There was a swing between the two legs and that. And... Oh, great save and a swing here the two legs you know um, Dundalk were phenomenal I think that first leg but now it's complete swinging momentum so really interesting to see that over both legs or both games sorry yeah no I'm wondering now how the mindset is for both of these players because Dundalk they know they still have a lead they know it's 2-1 and they have the advantage but they can't be letting the ball go through like that either. It is offside. There was fine margins there for that attack, but it does get flagged by the linesman. Some good passes coming through in Dundalk. This, not the, the strongest attack they've had, but it's starting to look like a good attack. A good opportunity could come from this one. They have the men forward. Just need to get the skill moves in, break down a player or two, and can really open it up. Outside the box now, can't quite get it a good bit of defensive play coming out and playing down the wing over the top doesn't get the head onto it not enough on it to make it a running ball it had to be contested in the air and some questions have to be raised then it's back in the air and I remember when I was younger one of my old managers used to say if it was, football was made to be played in the air referees would be in the clouds but <laughs> this game the ball is going a little bit more in the air we've seen so much passing game over the last three weeks I do want to see some of those long balls and it's starting to come out from Ireland. There's starting to be that bit of space being picked up and worked around and the channels being used. So I'm looking forward to it, but Dundalk on the other side, their attacks, they've been faltering a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting, you know, as we were saying, example, he put 16 up, um, goals up in his last game against Dinharps and 
surprising because you think even he'd be getting, even if he's not scoring, creating a lot more chances given that attack now. But, um, but yeah, it's been, he's been faltered right now. Um, luckily, though, he still does have that one goal lead. Yeah, that one goal lead will it'll set the bar here for Luciano to try and get back into this one. But right now he's he's not finding the same possession he was in the earlier part of the first half. But the defensive tactics popping up once again. Dundalk they always seem to change tactics as soon as they lose the ball. The manager shouting from the sideline for them to get back. They do get back in time to stop that pass over the top and get their possession back. How do you feel overall about these two players? Give me the, the monologue about both of them right now. We'll, we'll start off with Dundalk. How do you feel about them in this game in particular? You know, I, I still think, um, you know, the, this game in particular, the second leg, I think probably I'd say the lesser of the two, um, even though it is really close. Um, oh, nearly, nearly commented the card there. <laughs> um, but no, example, I mean, he's the top quality player, one of the best around. Um, you know, probably one of the favourites for this tournament. Even though he's losing this game, I, he's professional enough. He's been around lo long enough to know what he's doing here. Um, you know, he, he kind of last few minutes maybe playing a bit better defensively. Um, so yeah, I think he 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 he's fine. I think for the moment. And then Bray Wanderers go away. I, I've been really impressed with him. I haven't seen him play um, at all before today. Um, but you know, he's taking a right to example. Looks really nice uh, in around the box, nice skill moves and stuff. Um, there he yeah, is. Yeah, got that great start. So, yeah, just a brilliant match up here between the two two players I think you might see um, in the latter stage of this tournament. Considering my last name is Ferguson, I do have a lot of love for Evan Ferguson. <laughs> um, he's, he's my one to watch from now. I won't ever leave Man United, but Brighton are starting to look like a home for me too. But I think with the likes, I do want to talk about him first a little because I think with the likes of him, he is destined within the next year or two to go to one of those top clubs. And that's where we'll really see if he can shine as bright as he has already for the likes of Brighton and Ireland. We'll see if he can really step up because at the top flight, at the top teams up there, a real striker really shows their stuff with the likes of Haaland coming over and people saying that he wouldn't score as many goals. He's nearly tied the record in his first season. He hasn't even started every single game and I think he has more hat tricks than a shop at this stage. Like he's one of those players. And I think Evan Ferguson, maybe not to the level of Haaland, but I think he could become a regular starting kind of legend at any club if he can get to one of those top flight clubs and stay on his trajectory. So it is good to see that Irish talent, even playing here today in FIFA, playing for the, the national team. It's good to see. And I do want to kind of pick your brain a little bit when you're because you play in the different styles of tournaments from around the world. And is there many times where you've had an Irish player in your squad or have you ever really went out and looked for one? Have you ever went for like a Roy Keane legendary or anything like that? Um, Not necessarily, no, in terms of starting players. But I have, um, in the past, um, thrown some Irish players, um, you know, on my bench. Kind of uh, just, I think, of it as kind of a good luck chairman. And maybe if you're, you know, winning... Um, by a good bit you can sub them on maybe and try to get them a goal um, just for instance like I used to um, I think one of the years I had Aaron Connolly's card just on my bench because um, I used to play with him at Murphy United um, so he's someone you know I grew up playing with and then seen him got, go over to Brighton you know and had a great game against Spurs scoring two goals and now he's at Hull so um, it, I do like kind of having Irish players in the squad just give me uh, a bit of luck but um, they unfortunately don't get much game time yeah, feels like most Irish players at this stage, but with with the likes of the new the new breed of Irish players coming through, we're really looking forward to that one. It's done dock and the great little passage of play there, just cutting back into the box. We've seen it over the course of the tournament time and time again, but a great little start to the second half coming through for Dundalk, who had a bit of a weaker start in this second leg, but that does make it 3-1 overall, and all eyes now back onto Luciano, onto Ireland to to get two goals to even this one up. Yeah, and the pressure now is really going to be on him. We're approaching that 60th minute mark. And, you know, example, we've seen how tough it is already for um, Bray to get that goal. So, yeah, it's. Uh, you, I think you'll be looking to see uh, maybe constant pressure, pressure on heavy touch um, change soon for um, Bray and try, you know, maybe put example under pressure coming out and maybe force a mistake. 
yes yeah, we do see 60 minute come and go some tactics are popping up and some changes but let's have a look here at what, what the idea from both teams are because Ireland are really the team that need to pick up the pace and grab a couple of goals Luciano sending one into the box doesn't quite find the man the defensive header was strong clears the ball out and now it comes to Dundalk and they're losing possession in their own half uh, could be a bit of a worry the further this one goes on but a good dispossess it, it's a good opportunity but the defensive four there quite strong still coming out from Ireland and this mounting pressure this mentality game you, you're two goals down you know you're not in a great spot I think the flag went up for that one as well it did indeed and I, I have to ask about the mental because you're obviously you're the pro you're you're the big time player going into these two-legged games do you have these expectations that you need to be playing better in the second one to seal it or do you expect yourself going in I should get the first win and go from there as Dundalk extending that lead but I still want to touch on the mental just a little bit how do you feel going into two legs do you show everything you can in the first or do you hold on to a few bits yeah I mean I think sometimes it depends on the connection as well so um you know say you're playing a lot far away you'd want to play better on your home connection um when you're biting um whether that be the first or second leg um but no I, I think if I had to choose a leg I'd want to play better and I think I would say the second leg because that's where you can you know wrap things up and obviously as we've seen the last match up in the second leg that's where the extra time can happen that's where the golden goal the penalties can happen as well so um yeah I, I prefer to play better in the second leg but you know you always want to be playing at the you're at the top top level as much as you can um so yeah okay so you when you're doing those tournaments and you're playing in second leg and you swap the servers do you change your style then if you know there's going to be a bit of a ping difference do you, do you change the tactics around to be a bit more defensive overall and kind of just try to hold the ball a little bit more yeah i mean i can't speak for every pro but personally um yeah i do um if i know it's going to be slower um you know the the responsiveness isn't going to be there i will i will slow the game down just pass um you know try to keep the ball as much as I can and make sure my pass as well because I know there's going to be maybe a little bit extra bit of delay um, so yeah no definitely um, it is easy to just change the style a bit tweak a few things um, when, when the ping is uh, has a big difference yeah we do see Dundalk now it is a good lead for them overall and the, those extra two goals not to be forgotten either a lot to be done here for Luciano and Bray Wanderers it, another mounting attack and it's that ball into the middle if, if they can get the shot off it's nearly always a goal and trying to work those channels having to work back though because it's just getting shut down immediately and they do manage to recover it just about we'll go for a throw in but it, it's a very scrappy state of play and I feel like regardless of the result I still think Luciano has a really good chance of getting out of this group and he's in a great position to do so and holding example to a game like this it really shows how good of a player he's become in the last while yeah no definitely and you know he's which he probably will end up losing this it looks like he'll still have two wins from three you know second in the group um, he will have already played now the top of the group example probably so yeah no he's still in a great um, position to qualify you know this won't disheart him that much I think obviously he would have wanted the win but you know he still has a phenomenal chance of getting out of this group and I'm sure he still backs himself to do so yeah really looking forward to seeing how the groups will end up because you have to remember we're only in week three here and we have a lot more to do and a lot more to see so really looking forward to how these players will shape up as thing goes on and I've one of the person that I've met in the past that I have a lot of respect for as well the Gara show really want to see him show his stuff because he hasn't had the greatest start either in that group A and Colo now with that extra game and Lad as well picking up his one it's starting to look a bit of a heavy climb coming through for Gara but I'm sure they can bring it back and the likes of Luciano here example looking like he should be a shoe in for the top seed there from group C but I think there's still a lot to play for for the rest of these teams and looking across the rest of them there is some great players coming through especially with Delaney 
three matches played, nine points, sample will be on the same. But other players in other groups, they have dropped games, even the top players in those groups. So there's a lot of great players coming through. And apart from example, is there anyone on that list really spoken to you as like they're a player that I expect to see in the upper bracket of the finals? Yeah, I mean, you touched a bit on Delaney. I actually haven't seen him play it much, so I can't really talk about him. So, you know, brilliant goal, for example, green time. But um, I think Tyrone Ryan has to be a shoe in, you know, defending champ. Won it with Shamrock Rovers before. Um, I think he's top of his group as well. You know, you have Ranners, um, another big name over the years. Um, so there is a, there is a couple of guys here, um, you know, who could go on and win. I don't think there really is a clear favourite, but there are. And maybe a few guys um, who are starting to, you know, cement themselves as um, those ones to watch to go on and lift the trophy. So your top teams would be Example, Ye Ye, and Ranners would be your top few, would it be? Yeah, I'd say maybe I'd throw um, Delaney in there, but I haven't actually seen him play yet. But judging by his results, he seems like he's uh, flying. Yeah, he, he definitely looks like he's been doing well so far. Um, this is some some great matches: nine three, nine six, and nine one. So he's he's been on the nines, on the nines. Um, he, he's been playing really, really well. An example: we've already seen the the past games nine nil. He's won one and eight four the other. And um, then on the other side, Ye Ye was another player you were talking about eleven three and six two. There's been some good goals coming through there overall, but. That'll be the end of that one, and it will be Dundalk taking that one, and we'll see. Example, keep his winning streak at a 100%. So, thank you so much for joining us, still stand. Any other last few questions you want to get out of the way, or any answers you have for us, or any insight coming into the next few weeks? Um, no, I, I suppose in terms of just the players moving forward, you know, they're kind of getting halfway through their group stages. Um, just keep doing what they, they've been doing, I suppose, the, for the, the lads. You know who have been getting wins and then you are getting that crunch time for the lads who you know maybe are in third fourth just outside um you know the positions to get through to the next stage so i'm sure it would be it would be getting down to crunch time the next few weeks i'm really looking forward to how um things play out and the drama we're, we're about to see um over the next few rounds yeah perfect okay thanks so much for joining us and thanks everyone for tuning in and watching the stream we'll be back next week with more games and more absolutely banger moments so don't go anywhere, and we'll be back as soon as you see that notification. Peace.